Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. Oh, it's completely bold. Yellow Aki. I'm Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be doing a different type of video. We're going to be focusing on some negatives. And I like to be a mostly positive person, but I think this is a fun one to explore and something worth doing if someone is exploring a new addition to the reptile collection or their first reptile. We're going to start off with tegus and specifically talk about who should not get a tegu? What scenarios, what particular person? So let's get right into it and we'll start at number five. Number five is quite an important one in regards to tegus and that's if you're a workaholic. And it necessarily doesn't have to be just work. It could just be you're living your life up. You're spending a lot of time outside your home and doing stuff out in, you know, wherever you're doing it. But being that there's COVID, I'm sure a lot of you are a little bit more confined than normal. Either way, if you're out busy all the time and you don't really have a lot of time to be home and focus on your reptiles, a tegu is probably not the best reptile for you to be getting. You really get them because you want to interact with them and they're very socially intelligent and intelligent in general. And there's something you can really bond with and tame down. You're definitely not going to have a very tame tegu if you're not home spending a lot of time working on that. Now you don't need a ton of time to ta tame them down, but you do want to, especially in the beginning, really focus on it and make sure you're doing it right. And a lot of this includes research time, figuring out different methods to approach them and refining your husbandry a little bit. So generally, and I think this goes for a lot of big lizards or big reptiles, you want to have time available for them and time you can make for them. So if you're constantly busy, Tegu's probably not for you. Tegu's are for those who subscribe to this channel though, so make sure to check that lower right hand corner, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell as well for all the latest updates. I would very much appreciate it. And let's go on to number four in the list. You can afford the goo, but not the setup. This is definitely not how you want to go about tegus or any large reptile as a matter of fact. You will be spending most of your money on their care and their setup, their housing, all those aspects. Tegus are not expensive in terms of reptiles in general. I mean, they can be, but you can get a tegu for like $250 plus shipping. That's what I got Frappuccino for. So it's not ridiculous to get an actual tegu. It's just their housing, you know, that's gonna cost probably close to $1,000 if not more. I spent over $1,000 on Frappuccino's setup. I did a whole price breakdown of how much the tegu costs as well. That'll be in the top right, so check that out if you wanna see full monetary breakdown. But basically, if you're thinking you can just get a tegu and cheap out on the setup, don't get a tegu, please. These guys are so smart, and I said other large monitor or large reptiles as well, and I'm referring to monitors because monitors are so smart. So don't confine, don't restrict species who are at sort of the top of the totem pole in reptile intelligence, smarts. You really want to go more than what you normally would for a reptile with these species because they can do much more and they can think and utilize their brain in much different unique aspects than let's say, you know, your crested gecko, who let's be honest, kind of derpy. There are ways to save cost on tegus. You can use something like a grow tent. If you know how to properly, it can be a little bit difficult to secure, but it's definitely doable. So, you know, it's not going to be as expensive as getting a standard typical PVC enclosure. You can cut some corners and cut some corners as in you're not really cutting some corners. You're just being much more efficient. But in the end, it's just all about spending what is necessary to keep these guys in a good, stable condition, providing enrichment, and just giving them the lives they deserve. So if you cannot do that and you can afford the goo, but not the setup involved, don't get a tegu, please. At the halfway point, we have a tegu is your first reptile. I would not recommend jumping into a tegu as your first reptile. Now, I don't really see this too much, but it still needs to be said. I mean, I'm sure someone out there has tried to get a tegu as their first reptile, and I honestly, myself, 
think I jumped into tegus a little too quickly and I had several reptiles before I got Frappuccino. You just really need to know a lot about their husbandry to keep them in adequate conditions, specifically humidity. Their diet, we talked about this so much in the last month, is really complex and complicated and you can include a lot of food items in it and there's a lot to it. There's a lot to their husbandry. It's doable, but you probably want experience with a smaller reptile species and maybe something that's a little bit more intelligent, but smaller, like a blue tongue skink, maybe an Aki monitor, which monitors are smart in general, but Aki's are dwarfs, so they're not as large. And then hop into something a little bit bigger like a Tegu. I think a Tegu is a good entry into larger reptiles personally that's what i think i'd just rather hop into a tegu than a monitor lizard who socially you know they can be but i, I prefer the social aspects of tegus a little bit more but anyway i think i don't really need to be saying this but if you're looking at a tegu as your first reptile please try something else beforehand and understand reptiles a little bit more and you know, it, there's just so much to tegus, and alone just their size is intimidating and much different than handling anything you probably are used to. It's not like even handling a big dog. They got a lot of muscle in their body, so really think about that. I don't think any of you guys are thinking about a tegu as your first reptile, but just wanted to say this. All right, I mean, does anybody really like poop? But when it comes to the reptiles, we all have to deal with poop in our lives. I'm sure everybody who's kept reptiles has touched their like, a good amount of poop in the end. I don't want to get too detailed, but I've had quite my run-ins with touching poop and dry heaving and all that fun stuff. But tegus, they, they will leave human-sized human -sized leftovers, let's say. And while it doesn't smell nearly as bad as bearded dragon poop, I still think that takes the cake hand down for worst smelling reptile poop, it is a lot to deal with and it can smell really bad depending on what you fed them and it's just it's it could be quite a mess and you're definitely going to end up touching it at some point and even worse if you're doing a bioactive setup which i employ a semi-bioactive setup everything but plants there's not going to be a big enough cleanup crew to really break that down in an efficient manner. If you figured that out, let me know because I would love to achieve that. But you're going to have to do some spot cleaning. So it, poop's unavoidable in this case and you want to remove it. It's going to make you know the room smelly if you don't and you don't want to leave that left over in the enclosure anyway, you know what I mean. So you have to be tolerable of uh, poops, of uh, smelly nasty poops, of uh, human sized poops and just working your way around that. Do what you need to do. Wear some gloves, wear a mask, I, I don't care. Just gotta tolerate that. At number one, we gotta talk about our old friend Brumation again. I know this has been a hot topic as of lately on the channel. Quite a few, uh, Tegus in general have, but you need to know about Brumation. Brumation for Tegus is much different than brumation for other reptiles, I would really have to say, and it really stands out, and it's something you need to know about that you probably don't know about or know much about or know in the way tegus do it in just general reptile knowledge, if that makes sense. It's something very specific to them, and everyone I hear getting a tegu always is super worried the first year that their tegu goes into brumation and they're afraid that you know they're not going to make it and it's st various stuff like that it's it's quite nerve-wracking I mean imagine your child if you have one going down and sleeping for six seven months it, it would be quite nerve-wracking so this is how it goes though for tegus or can go for tegus not all of them brumate every year or at all but you want to be ready, you want to be prepared, and you want to get plenty of advice on brumation, how to handle it, should you leave the lights on, should you feed them, no, you shouldn't. Should you put out water, yes, you should. So you want to get all that information, you want to have that down packed, that should probably be your number one research topic on tegus before getting one. So if you are asking yourself, what is brumation, I never even heard of brumation until now, don't get a tegu at this moment. Please research brumation, do a little bit more research into tegus in general, and then maybe go ahead and get one. And these are the five situations I believe you should not be getting a tegu in. Let me know if you have any situations that I did not mention, or if you want to add on to any, that is fine as well, in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Leave a like as well, and let's get to a couple quick announcements before wrapping up. Big shout out to the patrons. I want to thank Chris Cuts, Kat and Rick, Darian J, Angela L, 
Hex, David T, Ellen M, Stephanie S, Toothy Chicken, Adam B, and Smooth K. Ooh, I'm getting better every time. Thank you for all your support. You guys too can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. Check the top right for more information. Tier three, get you on my forehead. A quick shout out to Repti Links as well. Repti Links is my main diet for Frappuccino and he's been at his healthiest since. You can feed it to tegus, blue tongue skinks, hognose snakes, and more. And you could also get $5 off your first purchase of Repti Links by using code Professor Herb at checkout. There's a direct link below that automatically applies it if you don't want to type that mess in. So go ahead and give that a click. I definitely recommend them. Remember code Professor Herb at checkout. And that's it. I appreciate you watching. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the merch. There's a Teespring link in the description below. That's all to the left of my head right there, right at your screen. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.